always maintenance, always maintenance. So, I figured I'd give you boys a close look here. I just went through it, cleaned it real thoroughly, inside and out, pulled all the panels, and I've got three tabs on this old nose panel here that are broken, so it will not stay in place. I got her shoved down there right now for cleaning purposes because I was going to put a final detail on the whole bike because once she's clean you tend to see the scratches and the wear. I don't know if I'm sure it will. Yeah, I'm sure it will. This is the new GoPro 8 as well. So certain areas like this plastic, you know, it's hard to get rid of this wear where the plastics have rubbed and vibration and stuff, you know. So anyways, I ordered up a new nose panel. I figured while I was at it, I might as well get the two side panels as well. So they don't come with the decals on them either when you order them brand new so I'm thinking maybe we'll have them wrapped i don't know what you guys think but let me know what you guys think maybe we'll do that i figure we're due for a little bit of a review over the bike though so maybe we'll go around and talk about some of the products that we've run what we've done to it um not a lot really i mean we haven't gotten into any engine mods we still haven't bothered with that yeah you can you, it's clear to see the wear on her she's she's been used right so let's check out the kilometers i'm gonna call this a review of 24 so 2500 kilometer review boys been a great bike let me just start by saying everything has a breaking point and we've been pretty rough on her so we found quite a few of those breaking points so we can talk about that as well um we're gonna put you guys on the head cam and just go around it with these that way because kind of pain the ass holding this thing up. I got three cameras here, so I think we might do that. Bumpers held up pretty decent for a while. I've uh, gotten a little too close to the boys. That's my fault. Uh, so I don't blame the powder coat guy there. I mean, it's the same on all my machines. Sometimes I just tail too close and if you do that, well, you're asking for it and you can't blame your buddies when you do get filled with stone. So it is what it is. But yeah, I mean, gotten in there and she's time to give her back some luster. So we ordered up new nose. I'm gonna fix this up a bit. I think we're gonna get rid of this. And the only reason I say that is because I parked the bikes out back and one's not covered up. This one's in the shed. After a week of sitting idle, I found a nest in the 2020 right here. So I mean, uh, having that open pipe there and rather easy for rodents to go right up in and make a nest. If you got a secure garage, not an issue, right? Um, but I think I'm gonna go back to the frog skin here and pull this off. I still think it's neat. It's great for the guys that are racing. I mean, if you store your bike somewhere secure where you're not gonna have to worry about that, then it's not an issue, or if you ride it every day and you know, but at this point, we're cycling through a few units too, so I mean. So sometimes now the bikes uh, can sit a week, two idle maybe. I let the kids use them too, right? Try to get some use out of them, and it's good to keep them running anyways, right? So. Um, yeah, I haven't been riding quite as much lately as usual. Been a little bit busy, but um, what have we got there, feller? Yeah, yeah, that's me. Right on. Cheers, brother. Cool. Oh, you gotta like that package right in the right in the video. Look at the rashes, boys. But I'll show you. We can fix that with a little bit of this. A little bit of my. This stuff is awesome, man. Now we used to use the muck off, which is an awesome product as well. But I find I get a little further distance out of this stuff and it works equally as well, if not better. Um, Ultrasound, it'll bring your uh, your unit right back to brand new. So we'll give you guys a little preview of that. First, I got to see what's in the mail. Right on, that was super quick. We ordered that from Best Buy because I just picked up, well, as you guys can see right here, the media mod. So now we have the opportunity um, thought about it when I was riding the Riker because it's so windy I can't even really get any audio out of talking and uh, if I can figure out a way to waterproof the media mod which shouldn't be too bad I mean the seal that's in here for the battery is rubberized so that compartment should be fairly safe um, I think at the very least you might wreck the microphones um, and there is some jacks here but I think plugging those up should not be that hard um, so yeah we might possibly try to utilize it on the wheeler as well. Oh, we should check that angle again. You need to, you need to do that to yourself and then, yeah, it looks nice. So yeah, I grabbed that from Best Buy. It wasn't cheap, 100 bucks, which is expensive. There are cheaper ones like 20, 30, but wasn't sure. I figured we'd try not to skimp out and see, see how well this does. So right now, we got ourselves a microphone. Should be pretty cool. 
Cool. That was fast, man. I just ordered that like two, two days ago. All right. Well, let's get into shining this thing back up. I'll show you how we can make it look brand new. I do have some new plastics in the truck. Actually, we'll just grab them up. I was going to order the decal kit, but then I thought, I don't know. Maybe we should wrap them. Figured I'd get some feedback from you guys. Find out what you think as well. The old Renegade's not going to be all curved up on the sides. Oh, you got to separate that? You kidding me? That's separate. Come on, I can't am you kidding me? I'm probably still going to shine up the old plastics just to um, store them away and have them for spares. It's always nice to have spares. What else to deal with this side? What's it missing? Something like that. Right on. These are going to look mint. Oh, and a new nose. Oh, I think I might as well order this piece. This piece. I don't know. Maybe not. Because then I got to go get decals again from, from all the folks. And that can be a pain in the ass. Well, the inner fenders aren't bad. They're just going to get screwed anyways, right? So uh, I think I'll get that piece as well, though. I'm a little bummed out. That That's going to look, uh, well, actually watch this here. Let's set these aside and I'll show you what we can do with the old ones. Even though I've got the new ones. Kick ass. Right on. Garbage cleaned up. Yeah, man. Lots of add ons over the years. 2,500 kilometers on her. She still runs great. These engines are awesome. Performance wise, she's got all the power she had when she was brand new. Check you know, the old rack out. Check out the powder coat on this. This is actually, like, this is one of the first things we did, this whole full armor. They're not in business anymore. Lucky 7 took over. I mean, yeah, it's all scratched to hell, but it's not flaking off, and it's handled a couple of rollover on the sides. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of stress and damage, so very happy with that, man. That's held up awesome over the years. Sorry to see they went out of business, but um, full armor back rack, love it. It's been great, so show you here. Just a little bit of love. Actually, let's just hit it. Then we'll go back. See that rash? She'll be gone. Once the rag gets wet with it, you can go over the whole machine with it. So you don't have to, I guess you don't have to overdo it too, too much. These old plastics here, man, they get hazy. Stuff works awesome. Watch what it does the old nose too. That's all dudded up. Everything's dull. I even hit the steering. Don't mind the outside. Under the fenders. Yeah, I gotta hit her. Give her that freshie. Simbon Expert Ultra Shine. The Boulette Quebec boys introduced me to this product uh, at a Quebec. I'm not sure if they ship to the States. I think they do. Hope they do, because some of you boys might be interested in this stuff. It actually works really well. Very impressed with it. So yeah, I'll start soaking it up with the rag, and you'll see like even spots that I haven't hit or missed. And just go over them with the rag. She won't look mint. So start into her just like that. Set that aside. Get our rag, soaking her up. Some nooks and crannies. And go after what you've got around. Let's see what you missed. Mm, it smells delicious too, like bubble gum. Yeah, yeah love, love the full armor. armor rack, man. Held up, tried and true. Very tough, very, very durable, thick. You can stand on it, no flex. Again, I think the Lucky 7 ones are a little thinner. I don't know if the boys would recommend standing on theirs, but uh, that one there is tough. Kind of start at the top of the machine and sort of work my way down, which there's so much to get for nicks and crannies on these things. Handlebar wise and controls, brakes. Yeah, rag's getting soaked. So after we're done, we're gonna probably grab a dry one, come back and just give it a final, final buff kind of 
But it's easy. It's just about rubbing around, spreading it, get a nice even coat over the machine. And yes, it does wonders once you go back out into the crap. Nice protective coat. I'd say lasts on the bike about three or four rides. You know, you can still see everything beading off and trying to uh, not attach itself or fix itself to your unit, which is kind of nice. I like getting all the black pieces in here. I'm sure you guys probably can't see that because my head's in the way, but. Yeah, we got a good general coating on there now, but uh, what else? We've got a lot of things done to this thing. We've got a Boysen Supercooler water pump kit. Now, I never had a temperature gauge on this thing to tell you exactly what the, what the cooling effects are. Um, but judging by the fact that I've never really, I've had limp mode on this machine in the two years and 2,500 kilometers that's on it. Maybe I can count them on one hand and most of them were shock temperature. Um, and then I had a time where my rod had quit and given out and we replaced that. So um, failures, well, we've had a power steering unit. We've had uh, rear diff, two rear diffs, because we failed out, uh, we broke, we didn't fail out, held up great to the abuse after quite some time, but uh, we finally broke our mud and wheels diff on top of it. So like I said, everything has a breaking point. It's about finding it and then justifying whether or not, you know, how long it took to get there is it worth the upgrade do you expect that you would have broke parts sooner if you didn't upgrade you know so a lot of times and a lot of products they can fail but it might still be worth it to you you know um and the mud and wheels diff was one of those exact types of scenarios you know yeah i wouldn't think twice about running another mud and wheels diff um however Right now with Can-Am switching it up to the straight gears, we figured we might as well take an opportunity to find out how well the fix is, seeing how we haven't had a problem with our 2020 units. So, I mean, common sense dictated that I wouldn't have to wait as long and I could just order one up from Bay Marine. So that's what we did back on the trail, right? And you'll see that in there. A little bit of beating still happening there. I can see Seco Racing Stem. That thing's awesome. I've rolled this bike a couple times on its side in the winter. Uh, mostly and uh, that keeps steering stiff and all that provides a little extra rise to it with the rocks riser two and a half inch I love it for comfortable uh, seating position and riding position especially when you start getting aggressive and the machine doesn't yank your your arms are closer to you so yeah I find that uh, helps out a great deal awesome product highly recommend um, we went through a couple exhaust systems we went through well not a couple started with the Yoshimura, which I loved it, but um, figuring out that we were going to be submerging our bikes all the time, which I did with the Yoshimura, was fine. But I knew at some point we are going to have to repack that thing, and it looked like quite the process to do so, drilling out rivets, all this crap, and I mean, it can be done. But it definitely didn't look as easy as the RJWC Mud Edition exhaust, which we got back here, and, uh, and it's been great. I love the RJWC Mud Edition exhausts. Um, I have no, well, I have one, it's not even a complaint, I guess. The only issue I've got with these that I've had over time is that you got to keep going over them. And right now is a perfect opportunity. As I checked it out today, it is loosened up again. So, um, you can check this out right here if you guys can see. Hopefully my head's in the right area. But yeah, so she's slightly loose again at the clamp. And I find it's really hard to get these clamps to cinch down on these pipes. And that, I think, has to do with, uh, the density of the steel like it's pretty thick gauge um, stainless so it seems like it's very hard to get the clamp on them it's positive and negative right i mean it's very durable it's never going to rust and all that jazz so i like that but the maintenance of it i gotta go over it all the time and check it just to make sure um whereas i guess so far i guess you should do it with any any exhaust i would imagine right i mean there's a lot of vibration heat and contraction so you're going to be checking them all out but yeah i do uh you know, I have a hard time fighting with those clamps. Uh, I've had to get a couple new ones from Trevor over time just to, you know, but that's no big deal. Um, will I continue to run the systems? I don't know. I, I love them. Like I said, the sound's great, but I also like trying different stuff too. So I don't know. We might just, uh, we throw, we've been working with HMF lately on the other machines and I really dig in their sound too. Of course, that was no shock. He's been running theirs for years on his machine and always digged it. Really nice sound, different tone altogether, which is nice, completely unique HMF. Um, definitely got their own growl to their systems.
fire mud and floorboards. We're polishing them up as we speak. And uh, these things have been awesome. They've been great. He's got textured on this one and now it's more of a flat uh, on the 2020. It's a little easier to clean. But again, you know, with the right products, these things shine right up and look basically brand new. So Fred even customized these for us. You can see that, I hope. But uh, put the old ATV in there, awesome. Ah, we're down in the clutching area. We might as well talk about the, uh, first we went with an STM, uh, Trevor Deal in at Dirty Life, uh, the QSC said, you know, I'd love to know what you think between the two. So I switched the primary to the QSC and uh you know between the two they're both extremely high performance and if they're dialed in they're dialed in they both work awesome you know so i, I would never say one's better than the other um whatsoever i'd say you've got options you know what i mean so um both great companies uh to get to work with i mean stm's always been responsive we message them and ask them about clutch settings and they give us their knowledge just like that and uh adam from qsc is the same it's easy to reach out to the guy and uh, he's not afraid to give you his time and, and make sure that you're, you're totally satisfied with how your product's run. And uh, awesome, man. So now we have the QSC primary and then we ended up getting crazy and throwing the Maverick tires on. At the time, these aren't those tires. They went with the X3 for you guys who follow the channel know. Um, the lad out west, Brad, he won that machine and he's still rocking those tires, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, 34s, so we figured we would go, instead of just running the Dalton Spring on the secondary, which we, we used to do, we went with the full STM primary, uh, secondary rather, sorry, and uh, awesome, awesome, it's totally smooth, like the smooth engagement of this thing, yet the, the immediate response when you stab it is, is unreal, unreal. Um, just shiver boogie too, for 34s on it, you'd never know because it gets down, I mean I have not... Uh, I've not really met any machines that'll just pull away from me. Um, I'm sure if I get into a, uh, a run on the road with a, a built machine, that's a little bit different. You know, I'm sure Wade's it would pull on it, but new Renegades, whatever it is, XXCs, no matter what, you know, on the lower end, we're just gone. We're leaving them. And uh, obviously they go by us when we hit our 100 or so. So yeah, man, I love the Renegade. That was their clutching, right? So. Um, tuning, we've always run Jeff the Bomb um, since we got the bike and uh, very happy, never had an issue with it. Um, we recently started working again with some of Jeff's products there, which is the uh, the dry NOS setup, 20 shot, and quite dig it. Really like the way it works. The RPM I'm achieving is, is optimum and all that stuff, so I got really lucky with the setup wise. And the clutching, it just didn't seem to need any adjustments yet, so that's great. Um, I was going to say about that. Uh, oh yeah, right, solenoid. We burnt out a solenoid doing some odd things, so I got to go back to Wade's. Probably going to be getting a new one of those. So is what it is. I mean, that's uh, par for the course when you're trying to stuff, and we'll get another one on there and uh, and get her back up ripping. It's fun to hit her once in a while. Um, does it make an insane difference on a stock machine like this? It makes a little difference. It gets you what, what it turned out to do for me was gave me two to three hundred RPM extra at the just like that, right? So just a little bit more wheel speed. And uh, so, I mean, is it going to throw you back in your seat? No. Is it going to give a smile to your face? Yes, definitely. Because she changes octave. She hits another RPM and she, uh, she chews. She just chews and spins the old 34s like nothing. So, um, I'm gonna clean up the tires a bit. I don't know what we do under the fenders. Did we get some of these? I think we did. But uh, yeah, so maybe we'll start peeling off the plastics and see see what she's gonna look like all blacked out. Uh, I'm waiting on the nose piece. I figured I'd just take all three of them, drop them off and have them wrapped. Um, so I imagine you guys can see a little bit of the difference from using this stuff already. Um, that gives a nice little build up and shine. I'm pretty impressed with it basically does the same job that the silicone shine does oh yeah I did I hit so hard on that tire I ate my rear tail light so I need a new one of those or just go up the whole rear plastics but I just don't want the downtime right now tearing it down that far but I think it's coming at some point I don't know the sky's the limit for this thing who knows where it'll go right uh, what else have we done to her our buddy Grant right out of the gate he reupholstered our seat that looks awesome this bike is used, right? It's used, and it's used well. 
I don't worry about things too much aesthetically. I, I like to keep it looking good, but maintain more so and ready for the next battle. So that's where we're at now is getting this whole NOS situation s s figured out. So you can see I've kind of gone over the whole thing. There's still quite the layer because my cloth got uh, pretty soaked up. So obviously I used more than I needed to. And that's fine. That is fine. We'll give you guys the old walk around over and let me see what you think. Maybe I'll put shine on some of the rims here first. MSAs, happy. Always seem to be a nice lightweight rim. So um, tires, EFX, I prefer, I got a couple preferred tires. EFX, Moto Havoc, one of them because it's a very great, it's a great tire in the mud and the skag and all that crap. And it's very lightweight. So huge win, obviously that speaks for itself. It's not, uh, you don't lose a lot of power equipping yourself with big layers of tires, so no brainer. Um, and then I just like the XM310s for all out sheer fun. Just ripping uh, and being able to deal with just about anything that comes your way. Also a very smooth ride and lightweight, again, so not robbing power from the, from the machine. Um, those are our tire choices and what we've been running. Uh, we talked about the floorboards, they work great. Uh, Definitely, we get all the clearance we need with them. We're also, okay, we're running a, a stretched rear swing arm from High Lifter, which it performed awesome. Stretched swing arm gave us more room to equip the large tires, and uh, they're holding up awesome. Lots and lots of hardcore landings on the rear tires, impacts, and zero issues thus far. So, highly recommend the old arms, work great. Um, up front, we also stretched as well to give ourselves more clearance for for big tires because you just never know where you're going with it, right? Options. Gives us the opportunity to be able to do a lot of different things and change it up from time to time tire-wise and stuff. And uh, actually made the machine a little bit more stable. Uh, definitely more of a forward lurching. You don't have to worry about the front coming up so fast it'll break your neck. Forward arched offset. A arms and they were a bitch to install super ATV I believe they they've made some changes that now negate those issues um, but after I beat them into submission not beat them into submission pried them into submission um, into their locations and mounting up bolt holes and pushing and prying oh we missed some mud yeah what was I saying oh yeah they were they were tight they were hard to get in there very tight fit but they're in there, they work awesome. Very durable once again, very beefy. Certainly beefier than uh, the stock arms, but uh, been awesome. Front uh, diff, we've got a torque locker in there. You guys all know about the torque locker by now. Um, love true 4x4, so when you click her in, all four are locked up. Um, and that's the front diff, right? So in the rear diff, like I said, we're now running uh, the 2020. Elka suspension, we swapped out the shocks. Um, differences they made between the 18s, 16, 17, 18, the Fox shocks didn't have a dual rate spring on the back, um, and the Elkas do, and it seemed to make quite a bit of a difference. So you got one separate spring here, and another down here, but the Elka suspension definitely made the machine a lot more comfortable. It was uh, pretty stiff, good performance for the Fox, but you didn't have quite as much, I don't know, range with adjustment and comfort combination with performance as much as the dual rate springs seem to, I'm just saying the dual rate because it's the only thing really different between them. I mean, they're both adjustable that I could see physically different on the shocks, but um, it seemed to make a difference. Be a nice close up of the machine here. So yeah, you know, there's that big rash right across here there was. Um, and the rain's making it a little more skewed now. And I've got to dry rag it once more. But I mean, even the back rack, check it out. And it makes that powder coat look brand new all over again. Really gives life back to all the plastics. Got it around there a little bit thick. I think I still got to do the two rims on the other side, right? Or did I do those? I don't know. We get talking so much. No, I didn't. So we got two rims over here. Fire Mud and uh, also we've had his halos on in the past. They're awesome. Kick ass. They really add life to photos. If you like taking photos of your machine, 
you're definitely gonna want some rock lights and some uh, halo lights from Fairmont. Contact Fred, he'll get you hooked up. Um, we are running a different light now. Um, RJWC came out with a uh, neutrino light and we equipped them right away. Again, Trevor from Dirty Life gives the hook up and we thought we'd try them out and see what we thought. And what we thought was, man, these are bright, man, these are kick-ass, man, these work nice. They look killer. I like the white halos. I, it's something different, so I really enjoyed those. Um, but we did notice that they took on water in the sense of humidity, I think, mostly. Um, um, they also did a second run of them where they said there were some seal updates and such like that. So we threw the newer updated set in and the lights leak. Um, getting water inside them have had some bulbs blown out. So I wouldn't recommend the neutrino lights. I don't know if it's been dealt with now. But uh, they look cool, they work great, but they can't take on water, not with the type of writing that we do. And I've actually found they'll build humidity condensation from being in the trailer in the hot sun as well. So I guess I would not recommend the RJ lights. Um, my buddy, Tony Hewitt makes the Paracord product. Now here's a product and here's one of those examples of just like the mud and wheels, yeah, I broke paracord now. I finally broke my rear the other day. Finally, the rear strap. And it's like everything has a breaking point. And this is kind of what I was referring to. I like having the black side kind of visible. I should just pop it out and fix it in line. Yeah, so we finally broke our rear, but we've pulled out numerous side-by-sides over the years. Stuck by some more stuck bikes and side-by-sides than I can really count or know. Yeah, I'll get the old under fenders here and give them a, a little licking too. I like everything to shine, I do. But uh, yeah, so what was I saying? I don't even know now, I forgot. I lost my train of thought. What do we got? We got uh, from Motorsports Addicts. We got the cap, we got the shifter. Awesome, love them, killer. Um, got our JWC on the other machine, they're also killer. Um, I mean, we can you say billet, it, it is what it is. If the seal's good, which the O-ring in that is great, um, then you can't go wrong, right? So they also make this little scoop here for breathing, keeping uh, keeping your snorkels open. There's a bracket that goes inside, which is awesome. However, I think I'll modify it so I can continue to use the frog skin to keep me safe from uh, rodents because I store it outside in the backyard at times, right? So it's not always in the trailer. Um, but yeah, I don't think I did this room, did I? Maybe I did. It doesn't hurt to do it again, does it? Oh, no, it's filling in scratches, so I'd say I did not. Yeah, that wax is amazing. Look at that. All those dings and scratches just fills them right in. Oh yeah, bushings. Another product from Dirty Life that we put on is uh, the garage product bushings. And everything is tight, boys. She's tight like a tiger. So, highly recommend you do those players, no matter what brand you're running. If he offers them, I'd be throwing them in because longevity, yeah, buddy. Bushing suck to replace, they do. It's not hard, it's just time consuming and it's a pain in the ass, it's just not fun. So, I mean, not that all jobs have to be fun, but it's nice when you can enjoy and install and have some beers in the garage with the boys and, you know. So, boys and works great. Like I said, bike never really overheats. So that was a great addition talked about clutching yeah it's still stock man engine still stock produces plenty enough for me the way it is would i do more yeah i do more why not but when i don't know when i'm ready i guess it looks good looks like a mint all right stuff does on the tires what do you do to the tires you put a shine on them you make them nice and black Oh, might, eh? Never tried that. Boy, we're gonna have to call our tire shine as well. How does that look? Oh, look at the sidewall. Wow, we're gonna do that to the mall. Oh, we got a gash in that one. She got a gash, boys. She got a good gash on her. Used. These tires have been around, if you know what I mean. Um, She's been good to me. 
Any other failures have we had? Uh, we had a power steering, I said. We had a rear diff. What else? Anything? Not to me. No, I'm not baby. She's been good. She's been good. She's been good. Man, you can just sit here and clean. I, you can just keep going and going. And I do. I pretty much do. I'm a stickler. I love my machine. Got some grease buildup in there. Molly over greasing. Well, I guess I wouldn't say over greasing, but. So what else? Nos, no, so we talked about that. We talked about that. We talked about that. We talked about that. Talked about that. We've done that. We've done that. Who's under here? We left anybody out. No, we got these all. Shout out to Gator Waiters for all the gear. Kick ass gear if you want to stay clean. Protect yourself, boys. Recommend talking to those boys for sure. Get you some of that, says Richard Rollins. Um, what else? What else? Surely we've forgotten something. We went over the lights we've had from our mining. Love them. Maybe go back to them. Um, I got a set of uh, multi halos for the 20. Probably throw them on there. Um, although I was thinking of jerry rigging them up on this. That would be very cool if we could illuminate that thing for nighttime riding. Um, yeah, that would turn some heads for sure. Do 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 do. We run a uni filter. Yeah, so there's really not that much, you know what I mean, for this bike. No, I never, never did the rad relocate. We added the Can Am front plate that keeps some crap out of there. Helps definitely. Um, yeah, I don't know what else. I think that pretty much covers it, boys. We got her all cleaned up, so should have put those new plastics on and throw the shine to her and just see what it's going to look like. Okay. I gotta yank them off though if we're gonna end up wrapping them, but who cares, right? Let me get rid of that. Can we shine that up a little bit? Can't help myself. It's how you notice things too. It's how you catch things before they become issues, you know. You go round and round your machine, just stand out in the front yard looking like a lunatic talking to a camera, and uh, you know, that's it. It's all camera on your head, camera in your hand, camera in the tree! <laughs> yeah, we're nuts. For sure we are. We're right on, boys. Um, that's about it. She's ready to, well, she's not ready. I gotta get a nose piece and then she'd be ready for ripping, but yeah, tighten up the exhaust. I gotta tighten up the exhaust. I think I gotta source a new clamp is what I'm gonna have to do because I've tightened down on this one so many times. She's been lubed up and don't seem to matter. They just, they just have a hard time. It takes a lot of pressure to get them to squeeze in on those walls. So is what it is. Keep an eye on them, tighten them up. I've heard of guys losing their tips because they don't check them from time to time. I mean, it's a, it's a product that gets hot and cold all the time, so uh, myself, I like to check on them, you know, after every couple rides. And I find, usually you've got to tighten it up after every four or five rides. Um, which for me, you know, that's that's all right. That's once every every month, something like that. Which is good maintenance to get into just checking over your machine. And all that crap. So, I think we covered everything, boys. If I think of anything else, I'll do my best to let you know. And, uh, yeah. Stay healthy, stay ripping. I think we're gonna try to throw a good good group ride this weekend. Should be a good time. Maybe go down to the Napanee ATV park in light of we've had some rain and uh, should be a good time. So a couple more spots I can see where I haven't gotten to, like even on the sides of the rad, you know, she's all plastic and, and she hazes the frame. The frame just loves a little touch of that stuff. Make it shine. Oh yeah, like fine wine. Damn, it's, damn, can't it? Yeah, she's been used. Damn, she looks good though. Yeah, maybe I'll throw those plastics on it. We'll take another look at it, all right? There she is, boys. Fresh plastics up top. Wow. It's her look like a different color almost. Just without the red decals on there, it just changes it. But yeah, that is clean looking. New nose, nice and tight. Not gonna pop off and jiggle all around the place and, and some side panels. So we'll probably, uh, we were talking to some boys at Benny Graphics there about maybe possibly wrapping them. So the one, two, three panels, see what we can do. I don't know. I think it's not a bad idea. Um, should be pretty cool. Yeah, I think we will. I think we will. She looks sharp. Let me know what you boys think. Maybe we should just leave it all dark. Leave it all black. I think it would stick with the sort of the black, but maybe give it some ghosted uh, decals 
so there's some sort of focal there I don't know but it does look killer just like that Wow that makes your boards pop even more Fred right on bud <laughs> 